We're now going to look at burns. Now people can burn themselves on different things. It can be a dry heat where you maybe touch onto uh, a hot stove. You could have uh, flames that catch through and they can cause some very, very serious burning. Um, you can also have chemical burns or electrical burns or even sunburn. These are all things that damage the skin. Now, as far as the actual level of the burns, there's a few things we can look at. They've got three main titles. There's first degree burns. And the first degree burns, where we've got this redness around here, the skin just turns a redder color. Um, it's very painful. When you get to second degree burns, we're then looking at the redness, but you've also get blisters in there. The important thing to note, if you ever get a blister, do not burst the blister. Blisters form because they're there to protect the skin. And you don't want to start breaking into them. A third degree burn is like we've got around here. Now, you'll see that actually quite a lot of charred um, coloring there. This is because the actual top layer of the skin and the whole of the skin is actually burnt through. In some cases, they can go right through into the muscle. Now, when you get anybody with any burn like this, it has a sort of mixture. You have, like around the outside here, a first degree burn with the redness, some blistering, and in the middle, you've got the main third degree burn. First thing we need to do with this is to remove any, just lift your arm up, any jewellery because the hand is going to swell. If there's any clothing over the burn then we need to be very careful, we don't want to just get hold of clothing and rip it off, so you may need to cut around it if the clothing is actually stuck to the burn, we've got to leave that there. Next thing we need to do is run it under the tap. Pop his arm underneath the tap for at least 10 minutes. Now often when people have burns they don't um, leave it under the tap long enough. They'll burn themselves in the cooker, pop it under the tap for 30 seconds or a minute, and then as you walk back across the kitchen, it starts to hurt again. It's because you haven't actually cooled the burn down enough. So with this example here, we're going to show you two methods of actually treating a burn. First thing we need to look at is any dressing we're going to put on here cannot be any cotton or lint. It has to be a special dressing for burns. If we were to put maybe just a tea cloth over that to a wound, the little fragments of cotton are going to get stuck in the wound, also, it's going to dry over the top of the wound and uh, we're going to end up with um, the hospital going to have to take out lumps of cotton or actually remove it from them and it could cause even more scarring. Now, if you're in a workplace setting, um, you may well have burn kits. These will be either a plastic um, box on the wall or maybe a, a kit like this. Um, and it's an emergency burn kit. It's um, a standard piece of equipment that you would have in any area where burns are going to be a problem. The dressings that you have in the, in the kit are water gel dressings. Now these are a, uh, a gauze pad that's pre-soaked with um, a, a liquid that actually cools the burn. All you do with these is tear the packet open. And if you actually look through inside the, the dressing, it actually comes out wet. The dressing itself, you can open that up and then you can lay it over the, the area of the burn. And what it's doing is actually because it's a gel dressing, it's actually drawing the heat away from the burn. Even just feeling the, the outside of the packet, you can feel it's cold. It's specially designed to actually take the heat away from the burn. Inside the packet, there's usually some spare gel. You can always pour that over the wound as well uh, as that starts drying. The important thing with any of these dressings, once you put it on there, leave it there. Now these are special dressings for burns. Um, this is an arm size, there's smaller hand ones, there's large um, whole face sized ones. So when you get the burn kit out, open your dressing up. Bear in mind you may need more than one dressing to put onto a burn. Now in the home you may not have a proper burns kit or even at workplace. You might not have these uh, water gel dressings. So you can use something else to actually cover it. Um, remember the skin itself is the main barrier against infection and problems. It's very, very good, but when it gets broken with a burn, a couple of things can happen. Infection can get in. Uh, also, we can lose a lot of fluid through it as well, so there's a risk of going into shock. Generally speaking, if, the, uh, if you've got uh, just first degree burns, superficial burns, and the area is greater than around about 5%, then we need to get into emergency medical services. If it's a partial thickness, the second degree burn with the blistering, Generally speaking, 1%, which is around the size of your hand, if it's bigger than that, again, it's emergency medical treatment. In this example here, we've got this third degree burn, so we would have the emergency services on the way in this. But if we do need to cover it up, maybe to get him to a point of safety or to the ambulance, we can use uh, something you've probably all got at home, which is conventional cling film. 
Now, this is actually a roll of burn film, but as you see, it's exactly the same as conventional cling film. The idea of the film is we put it around the wound so that it covers the burn right over, uh, it keeps it safe. This also can be removed very easily by the hospital. Do you want to lift your arm up a little bit? That's it. Just support it, support it at the elbow. Now we're not wrapping this on tight, it's just as a barrier. So just undo it. It might just hurt a little bit as it touches. So all we're doing here is just popping it round. The advantage of using cling film also, not only does it not um, get stuck when you want to take it off, but if we need to, we can now put this in the water as well, and we can still irrigate it with water to keep it cool. Just put your arm down. It's acting as a good barrier against infection and problems. We can see the wound quite clearly through there, pop it into water. Now while we're just talking, the final sort of subject on burns we did mention was chemical burns. Now chemical burns can put us all sorts of risk for yourself, so it's always worth before you're dealing with a burn to find out what chemical has been involved. But the chemicals themselves can actually physically cause burns uh, across the skin, it can be absorbed into the bloodstream. If you're washing chemical off, you need to look at what the recommendations are for the particular chemical. But you also remember you need to lean your arm away. You want to make sure any water that's going onto the wound is then flushed away, rather than it being over the body and then risking getting the chemical that was on his arm over his body. Now, it's not always the easiest thing to do to wash or cool burns down, but especially with chemicals, we need to make sure that chemicals are all clear. The other sort of thing can cause problems is not only chemicals in the form of liquids, but also chemicals uh, as powders. Now, if you have got a powder on someone, it's a corrosive powder, it may be a good idea to try and brush it off to start with before you wash it, because sometimes when you add water to a powder, it can be even more corrosive. Final thing just worth noting, if you've got someone with burns on their hands, what you don't want to do is strap the hands together, the fingers together, because what can then happen is the skin will confuse between the fingers, and this can cause them more problems. So if you do need to do a hand, try and keep the hand open. There's also special burn bags you can buy, um, which is a bag that you can actually put the hand completely into. But basically what you've got here is just a normal freezer bag you may well have in your kitchen. So if we had burns on his hand, we could just put a large bag over, maybe just making sure that the fingers are apart and that they're not touching at any time. So the whole time you're dealing with anything to do with burns, just bear in mind the potential for shock, Keep an eye on his main um, uh, life support, make sure he's all okay. Uh, just bear in mind that at some point we may have to lay him into the gr onto the ground to treat for shock. And also make sure that he gets proper medical treatment. Just finally, let's just look at some special considerations with burns. Now if you've got someone with a burn or a, or a chemical around the face, we need to be very careful if we're irrigating the chemical. If you have something in this eye, for example, we need to make sure the head is lean this way so the chemical comes out. We don't want to get the chemical in the other eye. The other thing with any chemicals in the eyes, you could be aware if they were in contact lenses. The chemical, although you're irrigating the eye really well, the chemical can still be held underneath the lens. Also, if there's any swelling, it may mean that the lens is difficult to get out. So make sure they've got very clean hands and then get them to take their contact lens out if possible. The contact lens needs to be thrown away. You don't need any solution or keep it. Just get rid of it but make sure they've got clean hands before they do it. You don't want to introduce any more. The other thing just worth mentioning, with any burn, no matter where it is on the body, you may well find that uh, the whole act of whatever's burnt them has made them suddenly breathe in because of the shock of the pain of the burn or the shock. It may be that they've inhaled some very, very hot air. And what you can look at here is you can have a look in their mouth, their nose, is there any burnt hair? Um, because what could have happened is this very, very hot air is burning into their mouth, into their respiratory tract, and we could have complications regarding um, their ability to breathe properly. So it's just something else worth bearing in mind and thinking about with every burn you have to deal with. Another specific burn you may have to deal with is an electrical burn. The most important thing with any electrical burn is just make sure that the uh, electricity supply has been cut off. The other thing would be there's often two burns, an entry point and an exit point. Now this would be whether it's a mains burn or even being struck by lightning. Any type of burn due to electricity, you've not only got to treat the burn on the entry and the exit, but also there's other considerations you need to look at is obviously basic life support. How has electricity passed through their body? Is there any burning internally? Is there any muscle damage? Have they fallen badly as they got the shock? Has it maybe pushed back and caused any spinal injury? 
Another type of burn that we will have to deal with, we did briefly mention it, is just sunburn. Now I know this is quite obvious, but the best way is to avoid sunburn in the first place. Often when people are on holiday or at workplace, they get burnt in the sun and uh, they can get initial redness, with superficial first degree burns, they can even get blistering. The most important thing with any burn, and we have to look at sunburn exactly the same way as we would any other burn, is we need to make sure it's cool, we need to take it away from the source of the heat. So if someone's got bad sunburn, you need to cover your skin afterwards to make sure you're not getting any secondary burns on top of the ones that you had maybe on the previous day.